kids, welcome to Sass Rub Rig Top Thing. So, not much to say this week in terms of announcements. I'm gonna work on this fairy. I spent all day thinking about what I wanted to do for this video. I was like, maybe I should do the fairy. And then I thought of a bunch of stuff I could do to procrastinate, but I talked myself out of it. I was like, no, just do your fairy, Tracy. Just do it. Get it done. I committed myself and now I gotta I gotta get the stuff done. So last time I went through and I started doing the rotation of the skull, but my artwork was out of place. So it came out wobbly and I don't want that. So before I started the actual video, I made sure that my art was in the right place and now I'm adjusting my head. So if you do that, like if you find your rotation's not working early enough in the process, you can double check your rotation. Like you don't wanna change the artwork, but I have moved the rotation before because the designer rotates the character the way that they want to, the, like from a design point of view, but that's not always the way you want to rotate it. For example, I like to rotate dogs from the chest because it makes sense from a movement point of view. Let me just grab a, boop, a rough here. So if I had a little puppy dog, uh, the designer often will rotate it around this point. I'll just put them on a little, this is, that looks like a horse. That's more dog-like. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a dog, trust me. <laughs> just have faith. So the, the, the designer will rotate around the center point of the dog so that, you know, now their head's here and their feet are here. So, and then, you know, it'll be flipped for whatever. But animating, I like to rotate around this part of the dog. Because if you have a dog that does this sort of thing, pulls his, uh, his back legs up, I gotta practice my dog gestures, turns out. So the dog will jump, like push down from the chest, or the dog sits up from the chest, like this. So a lot of the uh, the action and the animation I like to do from the chest. So I will take their rotation, which is around here, and I'll just move the dogs. I'll make a new drawing, obviously, like I'll duplicate the art, and I'll just reposition the dog set so that they're rotating around those front paws because it works. It just, I find, works better for animation. Um, humans tend to just rotate around the pole, so... Um, your center point of balance is here. You got your feet here. So this is a good place for humans to rotate. And if it's, it's if it's working, leave it. But if it's not, shift them around. But tr if you're, it's not your artwork, don't don't change the artwork. So I'm interested in doing more drawing videos. I haven't done anything with uh, drawing in a while. So if anybody's interested in something in particular from the drawing side, that I'd, I'd be interested in hearing your suggestions. Okay, so we'll we'll have to just go with it. Her skull's gonna be hidden under hair, but I still don't like the wobble I got. I don't know why it feels so wobbly. It's just this like the high point is moving around. That's called perfectionism, but it'll make you crazy. The jaw. So let's get the jaw in the place. The mouth is gonna be a whole separate issue. The jaw and the mouth are done. They're on separate they're in separate places here, but they're one drawing. So if I look in my actual drawing tab here, the jaw is on the color layer and the mouth is on the line art layer. So that's gonna come in handy when we're switching drawing substitutions. You could also use linked layers if you're feeling fancy. But for now, since I'm not using a lot of layers, I'm gonna redraw the mouths a lot. So I'm not gonna break them up into a ton of pieces. A lot of studios like to be able to throw deformers on there so they can move the lips and stuff around, but that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to keep it fairly simple, but I am going to attach a deformer here because it's, like I said, the head is one place where deformers really get a lot of bang for their buck. Tool properties. So I'm going to grab my hammers, turn on my envelope, and I'm going to set up an envelope deformer on this. It does make the face really like animate smoothly and some of the people, some people have been asking me about 360 rigs. The type of thing I'm doing here on the head the way that I've moved the skull around with deformers and now I'm going to move the jaw around with deformers. This is how you'd set up a 360 rig, the way that Toon Boom shows you how to do it. Like their gopher that they are showing off with their new master controller. You'd want to go through all your pieces like this and set up envelope deformers. And you could just use one piece of art. So you wouldn't need to switch drawing substitutions. Your goal would be to 
to be able to rotate the, enchi the entire character only use the these deformers Good boop. so here i'm going to take the jaw and of course we're going to have to draw drawing substitutions in for the mouths later but for now i'll just show you like i'll turn the this part off you'd extend the exposure of this one mouth drawing this this one jaw or the skull or whichever one piece and then on each one you use your deformers to go in and animate everything into place. That way, things you're going to get a super smooth rotation because it's not relying on the pegs at all. It's not changing artwork at all. So if you are planning on going the 360 route, it's you want to try and set up your artwork so that it is going to be rotatable. Um, the more difficult, like if you have really fancy collars or frills and stuff like that, it's going to be very difficult to just rotate using flat art like that. So it works extremely well on very simple characters. We're going to have to put in some fancy get ups here to get this mouth working too. Um, so if, but if you're working on a simple sort of a stick character, something like Alex Clark uses, then you can definitely come up with a 360 rig that's going to be ultra smooth and do absolutely everything you need it to do. When you're doing your side mouth, what you're going to have to do is make some decisions on where your art's coming from. Like, as you can see, because I've got a more detailed profile, it's unless I'm going to put a ton of points in this deformer, you're not going to be able to get it perfect. So what you're going to do is make decisions on what's going to be part of the drawing substitution and what's going to be part of the face. So here I can get the chin. But this part here is going to have to be part of the drawing substitution for the mouth, which I'm totally fine with. The, the nose, like the actual this stuff here, you, you got to make your, you just got to kind of choose what you're going to put on the drawing substitution. Once we get to the mouth, um, I'll show you how to deal with the deformer in the drawing substitution. Sometimes it's it's just a battle that you have to like live with. Because you're going to have to adjust your art to match your deformer. It's, it's, eh. I did do a mouth video where I think I, I started covering it, how you set that up. Oh, the fancy face video. I believe I went into the profile head and setting that stuff up. Bit of a nuisance. So. Now as we rotate, you can see we, we've got some pieces we have to adjust here just to make sure to fill in those gaps. Because when you're working over your artwork, sometimes you can't see that stuff. And I'm just going to boop, bring this art, show you my drawing, boop, boop. So I'm just going to take the head, uh, the skull art, and just pull it down a little bit. So then any of those little seams, because they're so close, they're going to close the gap there. Let me just grab my head and I'll show you how that's rotating. You can see uh, the eye here. If you were rotating this, you'd obviously want to use your z-axis to fix that up. Like here's the three-quarter back view. As it rotates around, it's, it should be uh, going behind the head. That's something you can uh, adjust. You can see the skull, even though it is kind of wobbling around a little bit. It does rotate very smoothly, and you can extend this exposure all you want. And that jaw, because it's all done with a deformer, it's going to be super smooth. You just always have to remember that the more deformers you put in, the harder your processor has to work to handle itself. Especially if you have gradients or texture brushes, then that's going to compound any issues you have there. Here's double check. While we're going along rotating everything, you might as well just check your pivot points, make sure all those things are where they want them to be. And extend the exposure on that ear, even though it's not going to work all the time. And we'll just change the art as we need to. Here, the ear is disappeared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish it down because I'm thinking about when it's rotating. So as the ear is rotating around the head, it's going to want to squish. So you kind of have to think a little bit ahead. Right, so see, because I've squished it, and I'm going to move it back a little bit as well, it's rotating with the head because I've thought about what I want it to look like as it's rotating. I'm also going to shift it back a little bit. And you can double check if you want to. It, remember, if you are double checking over here, you always, if you change anything, you have to copy and paste your, your points. Your, you have to copy and paste your keyframes. 
I mean, it's not going to update automatically. Boop, boop, boop. That's working okay. Check out those eyebrows that are not rotating. So even though you can't see it, it's still worth your time to rotate it into place because now it's going to come over here. Boop, 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 boop. So this is a different artwork. If I pull this out, this has now been squished and it's different artwork. So what we can do is take out the, the squish that we put in here and switch out our new artwork while it's in the side view, or we can switch it out here. So here's the artwork for that ear. We'll copy it. We're gonna move our pivot point into place. So when we rotate our ear to this position, we're gonna, we don't want any of the squish, but we do want um, the pivot point to be over here. And then we're going to boop, paste in the art, and then we're gonna update the earring as well. Here's our earring. We're gonna move our earring over to the new position where we want it to be. And then we paste in the new art, make sure our art's in the right spot. So now our new earring's gonna rotate, and it's kind of a guess whether you want the ear to be the three quarter back ear when it's in the profile view, like this view here, or whether you want this one. You can also try and get the animation between those working. So maybe you want to put in a squish. I wouldn't keep the other squish, the one that we put over here, because you can't be sure if it'll work. It's better to put in its own squish. Boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna get this recorder back. Side view. So this is this is how you rotate characters. <laughs> this is how you create a rotation rig. It's not glamorous. I mean, there's no there's a tediousness to it and you have to keep track of what you're doing as you go but there's no tricks to it there's no complex algorithms or anything it's just a little bit of uh taking your time thinking about what you wanted to do here we need the ear in front of the head so we're gonna put in point zero zero now i used to put in point zero 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 one but then i found out that the timeline only sees the first three digits. So if I put four digits in here, the timeline can't see that. That bothers me. That is life. So now I only use the three digits. Here we have another issue. We have this ear and then we have this ear. It has to flip. This is another one that's really difficult to do regardless of what way you're doing it. If you put deformers in here, you're still gonna have to flip like this. So you just, you just, you can't do anything. <laughs> you just get what you get. So what I'm gonna do is just move my thing into place and just switch the art. So when you go from three quarter back left to side, you're gonna have a messed up ear. So if you need an ultra smooth rotation here, you're gonna need to put in-betweens. That's it. You might be able to muck around with deformers long enough to find something, but you'll probably just get a better result if you throw in drawing substitution. You'll get exactly what you want if you really need it. That's one of the things, like, will I need a three-quarter back facing left going to, to the side? I don't know. If it comes up, I'll fix it in this, the actual drawing scene. Grab my art. Selecting might be a problem. I'll just copy everything and paste it into my ear, and then I'll get rid of the stuff I don't need. Boop. There we go. And then we check it, because I have a feeling I messed that one up a little bit. There. It rotates. And see, this, this part here is where you're going to get the problem. So it rotates smoothly except for that one little thing. I can live with that. Let's, uh, let's do the other ear. Are you having fun yet? <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fast forward in this one, kids. Don't forget to duplicate your drawings. That... That's a real bummer when you do. <laughs> so now this is there, this is there. Next view. I'm making a few design decisions as I'm going along here. I just, I can't emphasize enough that you don't do that if it's not your art. 
See here, we're getting a flip. There's not, there's not a lot you can do. You kind of have to take the hit. Uh, you could flip it, but you're going to get distortion either way. So choose your, pick your battles, really. You could also use link drawings for your earrings and your ears here. I think that would have been... Um, I might set that up, actually. I think that's a good choice. That way, if your earrings and your ears change... I didn't think to set that up in a sensible way. So now I'm just going through and double checking my Z axis, making sure it's on the right item. See, I put it on the drawing layer. So even though I've told it I don't want to add any keyframes on here, it's decided because I've typed it in that it's just going to hand, it's going to keep it. Make sure I put my Z axis on my pegs because if you're typing up here, you're able to overwrite the drawing animation, which you can do. Some people put their Z information on their drawings. It's you just have to be very conscious that you're doing that because you have to animate it back into place using the coordinates and control points. You can't just, it doesn't do it automatically like pegs hold on to that information. When your drawings have the animation turned off and they're not that smart. They can't do that. Let's do the nose next. So the nose art changes a huge amount from drawing to drawing because my character has a nose. If you have a character that just has a circle for a nose or they just have a little bloop, then you're gonna have less problems with rotation. Here, if I'm gonna want an ultra smooth rotation, I'm gonna have to draw in extra noses. Oop, I'm gonna drag my art up here because I'm lazy. This way I can select them both from the network very easily. I know, see the artwork's changing here. Again, we're gonna turn this off. If things are bothering you while you're rigging, just turn them off. Just make sure, to, of course, to turn everything on when you're done or else you'll have no nose or whatever. It's kind of hard because the art changes so much to decide where you want it to be because you're not it's not going to work out perfectly. You're going to have to switch to a, a completely different drawing substitution at some point. For the profile, if you do have a human sort of shape here, you have to decide whether you want this here to be part of the nose or the mouth. Because it's going it can move and stuff with the mouth, I'm going to leave it on the mouth layer but it's up to you what you think is going to work best. You, you're going to have to carve out a chunk of face here. Copy. So let's go in here just so it's a little bit clearer. I've copied a whole lot of stuff. Let's cut it all out. I find it's a lot easier to cut things from your drawing layer than to make a perfect selection. Make sure if you have any gaps here, you want to fill those in. Make sure that they're working though. Use my cutter tool to clean up that edge so it's nice and crisp and then come in here and make sure it's cleaned up precisely and I'm gonna have to deactivate my artwork and make sure to fill in this gap because our head's done with deformers which can distort your line so I'm just gonna have to overshoot it a little bit make sure that seam is cleaned up when this is the type of attention to detail you want to have if you're doing designer rigging for animation in a studio because the more mistakes that happen this early on, the more the animators have to fix. And you only have one scene, the animator might have 30 scenes. So you want to take the time to make sure all those little seams are cleaned up. Don't be a, a monster and give, give animators a lot of work to do. So now this is the three quarter back. This is the back view. I know from experience. Blue. Three quarter back. It's, I mean, it seems silly to flip it when you can't see it, but if it's tweening, you, it might, it might give you a chance to have something that works out there. Let's do the eyebrows while we're in here. I do want to throw some deformers on the eyebrows. Again, it's another place that you just get a lot of bang for your buck out of it by putting them in there. I don't know if I should put three points in here just so I can maintain this arch. Let's try it with two because you start with less and then add more. We'll see. So for the most part, you can still, even if I deactivate this, let me get rid of this. A lot of this you're going to be able to do without any deformers at all. You can just animate them into place. 
All right, so that is our whole head done minus the actual mouth. Let's just take a check on what we've got. So we can see we haven't gotten down to the lower body or anything yet, but our head's starting to work. So if you did, oh, I haven't done the, the cheeks. Gotta make sure those cheeks are working and then we'll call it done. So if you do need an ultra smooth rotation, there's gonna be places here where you can improve it. Here again, we've got this eyebrow going around the head there that we're gonna to have to manipulate. Also this eye, as it goes around the back, you can see we're getting some weirdness. So this frame, you might want an eye, something like this. This is gonna to have to go over the top there. You're gonna to have to fix the eyebrow and adjust this here. Just remember whatever you adjust as you go along here, you have to copy into your old frames. This is not looking too bad. So there's gonna be places where the program doesn't know what you want. <laughs> For example, as things move around, they have a Z axis and then they don't really know when to change it. Like it's time for this eye to get behind something here, but get behind the nose. So if you do need an ultra smooth rotation in, in a case like this, if you have a character this complex, because like just little circle head characters are going to work out much easier. Boop, boop. And then say we want this nose to happen just a frame sooner. It's starting to look like a crazy person. You're going to be able to fake it a little more. You all, I mean, you're even going to want to come in here and adjust. Like she needs a little bit of cheek fullness a little longer, stuff like that. It's something you're going to have to get really nuanced in if you want to have that super smooth rotation, add in all those extra drawings. See, so that's turning a little bit less hideous now, but it's still, it could have, it could be better. I don't think adding in more deformers is going to make that better. It's just a matter of dolling up your in-betweens. So, it, I mean, most of the time you just get this rotation. Um, in a studio where they want smooth views, you might get a rotation that's much longer like this where it has those in-betweens and it actually, you have to in-between it. It's, you can only do so much automated stuff. Whoa. <laughs> Some of the tweens turned off there. Oh, uh, that's a good one. Your face, oh, it's cause she's no mouth. Like why does her face cave in? It's like, oh, part of her face is missing. That's why. All right, so we're getting there slowly but surely. There's gonna be a whole lot more of this, so. Next, I'm going to just move down the list. I'm going to do her neck and chain the same way. I'm going to do her body the same way. If I find I have more pieces than I need with the chest or whatever, I'll take some out. If I don't have enough, I'll add some in. It's uh, it's not a science. It is, it's an art. So you just feel your way through each piece. Let's just play this. Whoa, it's way too fast. Blah, blah. Whoa, so fun. This has been an hour of rigging, which I think will compress down to like seven minutes because most of it's just me sitting here slowly moving these pieces around. Not glamorous, but it gets the job done. So like I said, if you have any ideas for some drawing videos, that would be fun or other types of videos, leave your suggestions down below. Like, share, subscribe, all those things that you know people ask you to do. And I'll see you in the next video.